In the last video, we looked at binary serialization. So let's look at binary, deser uh, binary deserialization. And of course that happens after the fade. So we have our binary data here. Let's see if we can deserialize it. Um, okay, so we go back to our chess serializer. Um, <clears throat> so our chess serializer says that we have our header file here. We have our board pieces, all this kind of stuff. Okay, so we want to do our load game binary. So the public board load game binary. Um, if the file exists, oh, sorry. So I'm going to do the sort of general part of it just now. So if the file exists, file path to do load binary file, else return create new game. So either the file exists uh, and we do something about it, or we are going to have to create a new game from, from scratch. Okay. Um, all right. So in here we used our binary, uh, a stream and we used a binary writer. We're now going to use a binary reader to read those values back. Um, and we're going to check a couple of things as well. We need to make sure that our, our header is our CHES values. Okay. So, um, I'm going to do using uh, stream equals file dot open read, and then it's going to be file path using binary reader, new binary reader, and then we pass in the stream again. And now we want to uh, read four bytes into. Uh, a string. So we're going to do string um, head equals new string and then r dot read chars and then we're going to specify four chars. Um, and because this is the head we're going to make sure that this is equal to chess. And we're, you can do other checks as well, but we're just going to assume that if it is C-H-E-S, then we're good. This is a this is the chess formatted file and this is all we need to do. So if head dot, uh, sorry, if head doesn't equal return create new game. Okay, so if it doesn't equal C-H-E-S, then we're going to return the new game. Uh, and obviously we have to put a breakpoint in here to make sure that we're not going to trip this and we're actually loading the data because the data we've stored in there is not, is just the, the blank game. So we need to kind of prove that we're loading the right thing there. So we'll, we'll get to that in just a sec. Um, so now that we have that, we need to get a number of items equals r dot read int and it's a 32-bit integer that we're going to read and you see that it passes in uh, an integer back into there so that's the number of records and this matches up with our right here and now we want to create all our board pieces so we're going to create a new board and then add the pieces to it so we're going to say board equals new board board.pieces equals new pieces and then we're just going to use a for loop to go from 0 to number of records minus 1 um, and then read those values and then create pieces from there and the great thing about creating pieces is that we know how to do that because we have our function down here So, um, int i equals zero, i less than num records, i plus plus. Um, so string piece type 
new string, and then we want to do um, a reader dot read char, and our x coordinate is. Oh, we'll fix that in just a sec. Uh, read char. Actually, let's do read chars one. It has to go, sorry, I should explain that. It has to go in an array. It just makes it easier. Um, float x equals r dot read single. Float y equals r dot read single. So this, all this code here is one record. Remember, it is a single character and a float for the x value and a float for the y value. So now we can do a piece equals new uh, equals create piece and then the piece type which is our piece type and then a vector which is new vector to x y and then we add that to the board. Okay, so our, oh, and then we need to return it as well. So we do return board. Um, so everything should return. If file exists, file exists. Oh yeah, of course you already made that, oops. I was wondering why that was that was coming up as an error. <clears throat> Let's just delete that one that we deleted that we created earlier on. Oops. Okay. Uh, okay. So we check to see if the file exists. If the file does exist, we open it and we assign it a binary reader that we can then read the values from our binary formatted file from. We then read the the head, make sure it's our chess formatted file, and then if it is the chess formatted file. Uh, we get the number of records and then we loop through the number of records adding our pieces to our board and our records are read in from this here so which is our one character and then our two floating point values which make up our individual records for each piece. Okay so that's that done. In our debug we also need to have a Public void button load load game binary and current game equals serializer dot load game binary and then do exactly the same thing here which is initialize that there. Now you see that at the code point uh, we don't care what format the 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 uh, the file is in. All we are interested in is that we get a board back from it. We don't care about what everything is. And this makes your programming a lot simpler if you abstract all these concepts and you say, okay, at the lower level, I'm gonna use a, you know, a text file during, during development, but we're gonna to switch to binary files later on in production because it's gonna obfuscate the data. It makes no difference to your game because your game is gonna have a board and it's going to have a piece. So internally in memory, it's going to look like this, but it might look like this on disk, or it might look like this on disk. Okay. Serialization is just all about how you want to store that game state on disk in your format. All right. Um, we did all that well. We're running Unity as well. Let's not. Uh, okay, all right, let's stop that there. Uh, so we have our save binary there. So let's make a copy of this button again. And we're going to change this to load binary. And we're going to move it down to there. And then we are going to choose debug load game binary. So that's the, the function we just created there. Um, 
And again, we run this and it will it will work either way because it's either going to load in the <coughs> excuse me, it's either going to load in the uh, default game or it's going to load in the binary file. But let's make sure it's loading in the binary file. So we're going to place a breakpoint here in our load game binary. And I'm going to click on attach to Unity just to make sure that we're getting into we're, we're hitting the right values here. So this is kind of a white box testing as we used to call it back in the day. So now when I click on load binary, I now get my breakpoint and I can step through. So I'm going to press F10. F10 just moves me through every line. So I press F10. It does exist. I'm going to read this in here. So I'm going to read in head. I can check head. So head contains CHES. So it does equal that. So now I'm going to, I'm stepping into my, the, the code that reads in the file. So I'm going to read in the number of records. So the number of records is 32. So I'm going to create my board, create my pieces, and then I'm going to read in the piece type. Now the first piece type, if I remember rightly, was the black pawns. So piece type should contain lowercase p. There you go, lowercase p. And then x should be zero, y should be zero. Uh, sorry, y is minus one because it's it's the second row. So if we do this again, so piece type is going to be p again, and x is going to be one this time. Okay, that's us. And I just press F5 and it loads everything from our binary file. And that's it. That's uh, that's binary serialization and deserialization. Um, yeah, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, uh, please let me know. Um, just write the comments below or give me a thumbs up or thumbs down. But again, um, l let me know what you didn't like about the video. Um, Awesome. Um, so thank you again for your time. I know it's uh, it's very much appreciated my my uh, my end of the screen, so to speak. Um, so yeah, thanks very much for watching. Till next time, take care. Bye.